This is what you get for being the first. Oh, am I the first one to do an interview? We, we my shoes one. aren't in this, are they? No, they are okay. <laughs> you want my house <laughs> shoes. All right, we are good. So, okay. Again. Sorry about that. All right. Hi, Carissa. Hi. Thanks for having us here today, and we're so excited that you're going to be a contestant in our greens cook-off. So we want to know about greens. What's your green story, and what? Um, when did you first cook them, or when did you first have them, eat them? Um, my first memories of greens are always around my family. I don't know when exactly I had them the first time, but it's always been during family gatherings or holidays, um, you know, during Thanksgiving, my aunt or my grandmother cooking a big pot of greens. I think when I was growing up, a lot of times we used like ham or things like that, and then folks shifted to turkey um, to cook with. But um, it's always been kind of a, a dish that reminds me of kind of communal activity because you cook a big pot, you never make a little pot of greens. Um, so you always cook it to share it with people. Um, and I think the reason that I love cooking it so much is because you can, it's something you can come back to. Like you can walk away and then you can come back, but you're able to still infuse all this flavor and character into the dish. Um, and you don't have to kind of watch it. Like there's other items that are coveted by families are really close to your family, but they kind of take a lot of tender loving care all throughout the process. But with greens, you can like, you throw the meat in there, you walk away, you come back, you put some seasoning, you cut up your vegetables, you talk while you're cutting vegetables. And um, I think it just makes me feel like it's a, it's a part of an, a, a family activity that I really enjoy. Um, and then they taste really good, so <laughs> that's a part of it. Did you get your recipe from someone or someplace special? Um, so my recipe for greens is kind of a mix between what I learned from my grandmother. Um, so she and my aunt cooked greens, and I think the first couple times I tried, it was me calling them. And my grandmother is one of those people who doesn't really necessarily... Um, keep a recipe book or anything like that. It's all her telling you what she does. Um, so I kind of learned to cook that way as well. Um, and I come from a big family, so cooking something that's big in a pot is kind of natural to me. Um, but I think I started cooking greens because, like, like I said, it's something that I always was easy to do, but you can make it really good. And for whatever reason, people are like, oh, my God, you can make greens? Make some greens for me. So... It's become a thing where like I'll make greens and my friend will be like, oh, save me some. Um, and it, I think I like it because it's kind of become one of my specialties. Um, and I've kind of made different variations. So I have like my spicy greens. I have garlicky greens that I make. Um, I just recently became vegetarian. So I uh, learned how to make a, a meatless greens. Um, and so I think that's the other thing I like about greens is that it's very versatile and um, depending on what greens you're using, the collards versus the kale versus um, sp having spinach a part of it, turnip greens, uh, there's so much of variation that you can bring to it. Um, it's just interesting because it's just leaves. So <laughs> you wouldn't think it would be that versatile, but it is. So have you decided what version of your greens you're going to make for us? I think I'm going to go with a more mild version of my spicy ones because those are the kind of favorite um, as far as when I make them. And I think I will make them with meat this time just because they taste so much better when they have <laughs> um, um, So, yeah, I think I'm going to go with the... Um, I usually make mine with turkey necks. Um, and so, yeah. We're ruining your vegetarian. <laughs> go for it right away. Um. <laughs> uh, this week... This week has been kind of a cheat uh -huh. week for me anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, Carissa explained to me earlier that one of the judges is her uncle. <laughs> so we're, we're going to just look the other way, pretend there's not a conflict of interest, but Tim Page is Chris's uncle. Oh, I know. Uh, cool. <laughs> so have you ever had greens with Tim before? Um, yeah, I think he's actually had my greens at parties and things like that, and he's given me greens and that he's grown. Um, 
it's been really interesting to watch him become um, such a powerful force in, in urban gardening and um, really advocate for healthy food and healthy living. Um, and people know him, so it's it's interesting when I'm like, oh yeah, Paige is my uncle. Everybody's like, oh, I know him. Um, but yeah, I think that learning about um, some of the things that he's exposed our family to in terms of um, growing food and choosing healthier options is really awesome. Um, he and I have yet to have a salsa cook-off, but I think that should come soon. He's <laughs> We've gone back and forth on whether or not I can make <laughs> salsa. <than him. laughs> oh, fun. Um, so do you don't have a garden here, do you? Or do you have a garden? I do not have a garden here okay. um, where I live. And I've actually never had a garden. Um, I'm, I come from a family where my uncle um, grows and my aunt actually grew flowers and things like that. But... For some reason, I didn't really get that green thumb, so I just cook it. <laughs> I just cook the food. So. I'll have to come to the Peace Garden this summer. Um, so where do you usually get your greens, then, when you do cook them? Um, I've gotten them from from family. Um, I've gotten them from farmer's market, um, and then I also buy them at the store. Um, I tend to like the local grocery stores. Um, the Asian food markets and things like that because I feel like not only do their greens seem fresher, but they usually have um, a cheaper option um, than the big box stores. Um, I really like when I get greens from somebody I know. I think it's awesome to like know where your greens came from. Um, it's exciting to get food from somebody and know that they put their hands in it and they, it helps create that thing. So. Yeah. So with the stores around here, you're in the Midway neighborhood, and you feel like you have pretty much what you need to have access to greens when you want them and other food, too? Yeah, I, I feel incredibly blessed to live in this neighborhood. Um, I grew up in this neighborhood, um, and there's so much access to everything here. Um, transit creates a lot of access to um, food options that are close, um, and then... I am close to like three or four grocery stores, so um, there is a good opportunity to get fresh food in my neighborhood, um, which I, I know everybody doesn't have that opportunity. So like I said, I really feel blessed to be in an area where there is so much access um, to not just eat food out of a box or a can or a bag. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the transit? Because that's your... Sure. Job, yeah. Too. Um, yeah, I think that the opportunity to just jump on the train, you know, I live living just off of Snelling and University. Um, the train is there. Um, they just ha placed the A-line there. Um, I have access to a lot of local routes that take me just about anywhere in the city. Um, and to have that type of freedom without relying on a car um, is really, I mean, it opens up your life to so much um and being able to carry my groceries on the train back so i can take more smaller trips but i have the ability to like get up and be like oh i forgot the onion <laughs> <laughs> run back to the store and, and i can do that i can walk to the store um it's really awesome they've also installed like I've, right on the kitty corner from me in the alley is a uh, nice ride station so I am, like, spoiled in terms of transit options. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Cool. Is there something that you wish, I know you said you feel like there's an abundance, but is there anything that you can think of that you might want to have in the neighborhood or in the Rondo Frogtown area to make things more accessible or that you would just, like to see to share or I, I, um, I would love more opportunities to connect in the way that this greens cook off is connecting folks who cook fresh food um, I think one thing that you don't always have the opportunity to eat with people and gather with people around food um, and I think that's a beautiful experience to have and so 
if anything, I would like to plug men more into community and, and do those types of things and be able to share uh, family recipes and be able to share that atmosphere of, uh, you know, as we were talking about the part, the party that happened after the peace celebration, like that atmosphere of people bringing dishes that they cook traditionally and um, be able to taste different things and share things and tell the stories about it and laugh about it and have a little wine and those types of things is a beautiful thing. Like, um, I think it just connects us so much more and you learn to understand where people are coming from in a way that there are very few things that do what food can do to connect people um, across cultures and across backgrounds and, you know, greens from my family may be completely different from greens from your family, but we can talk about, like, what is your strategy? And there's always going to be common ground there because it's food. <laughs> and we all have to eat. So, um, yeah, I think that's what I would like to see is more opportunity to connect with folks, um, to share how you eat better. Um, as I'm learning how to eat better for my health and for my body, um, being able to connect with people who know more than me is something that I look for opportunities for. Our first interview said that too. More gatherings, they call them covered dishes, covered pots, or potluck. Mm, yeah. So, um, is there one particular food story you want to share with us? So, like, around a particular food, or that doesn't have to be greens and. Uh, Or if not, um, is there any kind of story other than... Um, I would say that, you know, I talked about my... Sorry, I'm standing up during the... This, this is my uh, great-grandmother, my grandmother, my mother, and me. Um, we're four generations of oldest daughters. Um, and I think the traditions of, like, food and gathering are something that are being uh, passed down and handed down. And um, like I said, my grandmother's been extremely influential in how I cook. Um, our family comes from the South originally, Arkansas, and uh, my mother was born in St. Louis and I was born here. And so I think food is one, particularly being um, African American, um, Culturally, food is one of the most important things for us in terms of connecting to home place um, and really looking at identity. And so I feel like that opportunity to cook food that um, my great-grandmother may have grown up eating, that, you know, sometimes I talk to somebody from down south and they're talking to me and they're like, you're northern, you don't know nothing about cooking greens or chicken. <laughs> like, no, I know a little bit of something about something because of these ladies so um I don't know if that's a food story but it's the thing that I get excited about is just that that passing of those um opportunities like me getting my my grandmother's teriyaki chicken recipe which was so exciting for me I finally got it down the last time I made it or um one day I'm gonna get my aunt's pound cake recipe because it's awesome um <laughs> But yeah, those opportunities to take that because you carry it with you and then you pass it on and it just keeps going. Um, and I think that's just beautiful, like, especially for people who, like I said, don't have access to be able to always connect to the culture that they came from um, or don't have that direct access to the places where their families hail from. Um, so yeah. Cool. So you would be willing to... Um I don't know, what's the word, mentor somebody who didn't have grandmothers and mothers like this that um, wanted to learn yeah, something I, about I food? always share, if people ask me, like, how do you do this? I'm, I'm a person who doesn't believe in keeping secrets in terms of, like, the recipe, because mm -hmm. even if you try, you can never make it quite like me. <laughs> 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 so I, I think it's awesome to be able to share how you prepare things or what you need to do. Um, so I, yeah, I think that's a cool thing to, to be able to provide people with your knowledge. So I heard chicken teriyaki. Any other really fantastic recipes? Um, my sister has a phenomenal uh, 
scratch stuffing recipe that she's becoming pretty famous for in our family now. Um, I think, uh, I'm trying to think if there's other dishes that, guacamole is one that I'm pretty good at. Um, I love making guacamole and it's, it's another one of those things where you always make it to share because you're not going to make a little bit of guacamole and then there's never any the next day. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else you'd like to share with us today? Um, no, I'm really excited about the Greens Cook-Off. My eyes kind of lit up when I heard about it, so um, I'm excited to participate. And um, I really thank you guys for the opportunity of letting me join up and see if, see if I'm good enough. I feel like I'm going to be on Chopped or something. Or <laughs> <laughs> one of the Food Networks. <laughs> well, we're really excited that you're volunteering to cook and... Diane did say your eyes just totally lit up. <laughs> and we were trying to get people from the garden, and she said, no, Carissa's got to cook greens because yeah. her eyes lit up. So. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, I love the combination, like that idea that kind of came out there where you were talking about mentoring people in the back in the early when we were talking, you talked about how food is when you get greens or other foods from people you know. Like this is, as I think about what kinds of things you could do for the neighborhood, I kind of love the idea that maybe some of these meals are a chance both to, to increase the number of people who get to be part of those networks, to get food from people they know, yeah. but also like it's just like young people feed in on some of this learning. Yeah. yeah. You want to say more about that? I know. I just said. <laughs> we just, we can talk about it. Right. Yeah. See what the next edition looks yeah. like. How can we make okay. that happen? So. Okay. Do either of you have a question? or? Well, I have a comment. Um, there is a block club that sort of centers on Edmund. We're going to invite you to that block club because sometimes people have events, you know, just spur the moment and uh, you get to meet more neighbors that way and connect to more neighbors that way. And maybe people that you know in this building or any of the other buildings. Living in a neighborhood with, with apartment buildings is a little bit different than living yeah. uh, along a street that's all family homes. And I think that that sometimes, you know, Jane Jacobs talked about that a lot in her um, New York and, 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 and Canadian things. And I just think, hey, Carissa, we got to get together and we got to get to meeting other people in the neighborhood who do like you do, like to eat, like to cook, and boy, Skillshare. Skillshare, you know, that's to me is huge. Well, thank you. We're um, excited to eat your greens. I am. Yeah. <laughs> the spicy kind. I like that. 